Oh yeah. Right. Uh, what do I start today? Right. One of uh, one of the subscribers has actually asked um, whether it would be any cheaper to repair the bike yourself or send it away. Admittedly, that is a very good question. The question I've got to ask you is, um, right? How can I put it? Okay. Let's see if I can make some sense out of this for you lot. Okay. Right. We have one side of the crank, which we can all see, and uh, the problem is with this, we don't know if this crank's going to be any good until we, are, meaning you, the punter, or me, until we strip it all down, okay? The question is, do we do the work or do we send it away? Well, personally, I'd actually do the work myself. Now, I'm obviously having a debate with one of the uh, people that have decided to come up on the YouTube and uh, states that what I've done is wrong and uh, the comrade is just perfect. Uh, I happen to d disagree with him. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, which I've asked for your opinions every now and again. But the point I'm trying to make across with the comrade is if I can shave off 1.2 millimeter travel from side to side, just the conrod, can you imagine how much movement would be in the bearings on the conrod? Okay, how much movement would be moved on the conrod as well as the main shaft bearings? These ones. Well, the question I've, the question that he's asked is a valid one, and the point he's made is also valid. I do not tend to argue about certain subjects but if the bearings are faulty being on the axis then sure the comrod is going to oscillate or pendulate like that side to side in the case if it's not stable enough well there is a reason why that that does happen every now and again and it's not just because of the bearings Please understand that this has to be perfectly aligned, okay? It has to be perfectly aligned across the top. So if you have these bowls that are slightly out of uh, warp, let's say this side here is a little bit further up, let's say a millimeter off. It may not seem a lot, but this is when you do your runouts. And a runout, I have tested this, the runout is the way you measure from this side to this side as to how far the pitch and torque is out of sequence. Now, if this was one millimeter up, you will find that in the case, it will be doing this, meaning that this would be exaggerated as well with the piston on the end, meaning you're getting too much oscillation left to right. That is only because these two parts are completely out of sync and it will actually cause the whole bike to vibrate um, something rotten. It will therefore destroy not only your piston, your crank, it will destroy your bearing, it will destroy your housing, it will literally destroy your engine completely left to right. But the point I'm trying to make is with the Comrod, there is a certain amount of movement in there, no two ways about it, but there is a certain limit as to how much this Comrod can actually give you, or how much you're allowed. And as far as I'm concerned, I would say between half a millimetre and up to one millimetre left and right movement. Because what, when you get a one millimetre plus movement within the con rod, you can only imagine how much flex is going to be on these substrate bearings. Now this is the old one, and it sounds crap, but you can only imagine how much twisting and torquing that this crank would have to do with the uh, comrod, you can only imagine how much damage it's going to be causing to your barrel. Now, if <laughs> one of them turned around and said, oh, it was fine, no problem, stuck it all in and it will run happy as Larry, it will do. For how long is a different matter, how you treat the bike is a different matter. How you treat the bike is a direct output as to how you would expect the bike to be treated for yourself. Now, for reliability purposes, you have to make sure that everything's within tolerance. I have found that this was well over 1.5 millimeter in left and right. I have shaved off one full millimeter in that movement. But with these new bearings, you can hear, hang on. Yep, 
there's quite a bit of movement there. But nowhere near as bad as the other bearing, the other crank bearing. But both, all of these three, one bearing inside there, one bearing on either side each, three bearings in total. Not being funny, but you'd be best of changing the whole lot. If you're going to do an engine, you do it properly, no matter what. I mean, if you just want to rebuild the engine and sell it on because you just cannot be bothered, fine, people will do that. But this is where you, as a new owner, will become the sufferer. You will be ending up in the same predicament as what this gentleman has been with his engine. He didn't realise it was going to be as bad as this, neither did I. But, given the circumstances, I'm prepared to do what it takes to get the bike working. But there's got to be some sort of uh, understanding that when you do certain things like this, you've got to be prepared for the worst. Okay? Right, enough about this. But as I said, one bearing, two bearing, and you've got the third one on the inside. And truth be known, you'd be better off replacing all three of them, no matter what. And if you have got side to side movement, it would be the best thing since last bread if you did, if you changed it all. But the other question is, and this is coming down to should we rebuild it or should we send someone else to rebuild it? Personally speaking, I would say you rebuild it. There is a reason for that because then you get to know exactly what your engine's all about, why it's the way it is, and what has gone wrong with it. So you can predetermine something that's gone wrong, but anyone that's going to rebuild the engine can rebuild it for about four, five hundred pounds. I've seen a fully rebuilt one on eBay. And is it really worth it? Um, yes, if you're on a sticky wicket and you, you're on a budget, fine, go for a rebuilt one. Normally, the real rebuilt ones will have a Metaka barrel and a Metaka piston. I hear good things and I also hear bad things about Metaka. Personally speaking, I'm all about originality if possible. But everyone's their own uh, opinions. So, without further ado, I'll actually show you something that is wrong with this uh, crank or this um, crank casing. Now, whether the camera's going to be able to pick it up, it's beyond me. I'll see if I can zoom in and actually get what I can see as a problem. Right, let's leave it there for a second. Right, whilst I'm doing that, let's see if I can feed this through the back. Oh, there we go. Can you see that? Yeah, that is where the crank, uh, sorry, the casing, the crank casing, or the engine itself, the engine casing, this is where the casing is warped. It's, uh, believe it or not, it's actually warped by 0.15. It doesn't show itself normally, but if I was to do it again, you'll see that it goes in the bank back there. There is a drag. And this is, this is a 0.15, sorry, this is a 0 .1, 0 0.1, and it goes through quite easily. There you go, 0 0.1, okay. Well, I have spoken to a garage about this. It was the same thing as what I did with the crank, and he told us that the crank would be better off being repaired regardless, and it would mainly be the Conrod bearing that would need to be changed. Yes, change all the other bearings. I said I'd already done that. But he said, no, the bearings on the Conrod would be better off change. But with regards to this, he said, truth be known, you can get it shaved off ever so slightly. It would cause a detrimental impact in the overall dimensions. And I'm sure someone's got to beg to differ on that one. But it does. It does make a difference. And I'll show you why in a second. But with the... Uh, um, crank case, you can see that somewhere on here that it was bedding on quite nicely. As you can see, it was gripping on quite nicely, the gasket's set, and it's left an imprint. And that would be the same for the other casing. Now, to me, I would normally get this shaved off, but I've actually spoken to the owner, and that's another story I've got to tell you about. But as you can see, the gasket has bitten onto it quite nicely. So that would tell me that even though that this may be slightly warped because it's been excessively heated up, what it tells me is that uh, if it's gripping onto both sides with uh, uh, the paper or gasket set, which is up here, thankfully, that came in a post, 
All for about £32. Yep, £32 this cost me. Now, I say the crankcase is going to be okay for the rebuild. Truth be known, I'd rather shave off just that 0 0.05 on both sides of the crank or crankcase. That way, I can make sure it's going to be 100% flush fit. But I have done a, a dummy run, and what I've done is I've re-strapped the casings back together. I've bolted it all back together, but left the internals out. I took all the internals out and just bolted the case back together, and I do not get daylight through it. So you can even hold it up to daylight, and you'll see that there is daylight coming through there. But with this, um, where I've bolted it all back down, talked it up, admittedly, it brought it all back to alignment. So I'm wondering how many engines out there that do have a warped crank. But the only time you'll ever find if this is a warped crank, or sorry, crank case, I do apologise, um, is by stripping it down yourself. But it doesn't add that much more. Average between 20 and 30 pounds for a second-hand crank case. But admittedly, a lot of people do not tell you, and I'm, I will repeat, they do not tell you as to whether it's good or not. Which is rather sad, to be honest with you. Right, another thing. Now, I'm just going to give you a bit of a blue background here for a second. Okay, I've also been asked about what parts I should be replacing and what parts I shouldn't be. Right, what I'll do, I'll zoom in onto one of these. Right, on some of these teeth, now I'm going to have to try and find out which way it is. I think it's the other way, to be honest with you. Here's my little eyepiece. Right, let's see which way it goes. Oh, yeah, it's all that way. Right, let's zoom out quickly. Right, as I'm slowly zooming in, what you might find is that some of the teeth are badly burred. Can you see that? There's burring on the tooth there. And what you're looking at, without moving the item too much, the burring is there, right there. And again, can you see there's a gouge there? There you go, that's a better way. Right, that's the old one. Here, it's a new one. Can you see the difference between those two? It'll be hard push to see, but you don't get any gouges or burrings on that. Perfect. So, just this alone. This being the water pump drive gear. This item is, hang on, that's how much? How much is that? $15.99. Now this, I would say, would need to be replaced. There is a reason for that. Because this connects to that. This it's a water, uh, sorry, an oil pump drive gear. And this has the same problem. Don't forget this is your oil pump drive gear. Now these do not normally get replaced. Not normally. Oh, hang on. If you look closely, can you see that some of the teeth is actually chewed off? Yeah, there you go, there's a good one, right there. And what I'll do, I'll use this. I'll bring this into the camera. You can see it's chewed off there, there, and there. Right, it's being the oil drive, drive gear, or oil pump drive gear. This in itself is £25.99 with £5 postage and packing. Now, normally, when you rebuild an engine, these two little items do not always get replaced. These will actually be used again in order to get your bike running. Well, this is how you'll drive down the prices on rebuilding your engine. To rebuild an engine is quite easy. To rebuild a crank is about, mm, let's just say, £110 on the worst case scenario. £110 to get the whole crank rebuilt and you do not supply the parts. They send the uh, crank through, then they use a metaka barrel and a piston, slap it all together. They may or may not change the bearings. They may not, they may or may not change the oil shaft seals. These type. 
this is a boon run, unfortunately, but hey, never mind. Um, there's a lot of pros and cons in getting things done the way you want it. It's like this, for example. They do not always change these. Now I can tell you that these are, in actual fact, brand new. Even though these may have had about, I don't know, oh, let's say five minutes usage, these are actually brand new. I do have a receipt somewhere, but these in itself is another major part. But these are quite tight when they're brand new, and it stops the engine from turning over properly. Okay? Uh, when you start replacing all these little, um, how can I put it? All these little items in order to replace your bike and get it up and running to super standard factory settings uh, truth be known, you'd be better off doing it yourself if you want my personal belief, do it yourself one, you get to know where the problems lie two, you can be a type of person that turns around and said I rebuilt that, I did that all myself, I didn't have to pay anyone to do it now isn't that something to be bragging about, especially when you see your mates and that your bike is pissed off down the road quicker than what theirs is you can say, well, that's because I do a damn good job. Well, if you're going to do a job, you do it properly. First time, every time, no matter what. Right, uh, I can't think of anything else at the moment, but if there is anything else uh, I can do... Oh, there is something else. Right, this is how much I've spent so far. Okay. Right. Bearings. $59.99. Woods Drive Pump Gear. $15.99. I, th I bought a Pilot Jet. Didn't need to, I did clean it out eventually, but I bought a brand new pile of because it was a bit bunged up and uh, a bit sticky to try and release all the crap inside. Alright, the cum rod, I paid £51. The clutch plate, I had to buy one clutch plate for £3.80. So far, £133.78. The gasket set, yes, that's another one. Uh, the gasket set, which I didn't put down on there, is another £31, £32. So that's 165.78. 165.78 so far. Now, after that, 165.78, what I need to do is send this away to get this rebuilt or to get it re nicker sealed. I will try and get the uh, 54 size diameter so I can buy a 98, a possible 99 piston. Get it fairly tight but just right. Um, yeah, so that's going to be about 160, and it's going to be from Lang Quartz. So that's Lima, Alpha, November, Golf, Charlie, Oscar, Uniform, Romeo, Tango, dot co dot UK, Lang Quartz. Now that company will re your barrels. Um, they can either weld the inside where it's been damaged, then re it, or if it's in serviceable order, they'll just bore it out, re it to the right dimensions, diamond, diamond it up so it's nice and, nice and tight, and then they'll send it back for you for the best part of £160, but that's without delivery, obviously. Um, but they are a well-known company on the internet, which is being used by Mike Smith, uh, it also gets used, well, it used to get used by Stan Stevens. Stan Stevens is another guy that is one of the best two strokers around. But he's decided to retire, uh, well, semi retire actually, his words were to me. But um, he says a few people do use him every now and again. He does do a few jobs, and he's even teaching other people to do this. However, given the circumstances, he's decided to retire. But uh, being one of the foremost experts in two strokers, uh, he actually advised me to use uh, Lancourt, which I will do once I have raised about £160 just to get the original Aprilia uh, part re sealed. Once I've done that, then I've got to go and get a piston. That's another story. That's going to take time for me to deal with. But with that being said, i still got to decide whether I need a dome or a flathead. I'm still tempted to go for a flathead. Um, I've still got to make inquiries about the uh, titanium rings but we'll soon see what happens with that one but well, given what i've known here uh 165 78 is what it's cost me so far to rebuild the engine but the time is something that you can't put a price on because most people will turn these around in probably a day and a half two days i'm turning it around in a couple of months 
purely because the guy doesn't need it back straight away because he's still in uh, Scotland. But uh, um, with me, it's money that I have to wait for, and uh, I don't have a lot to keep going. I can only do bits and bobs because I'm repairing three bikes at the moment. But uh, I'll see what happens from now on in, and I'll keep you apprised. But I will do another video soon with regards to the bearings because we will have to put bearings in here. As you can see, I've put one O-ring in there and I have put another O-ring in there. But I've got to put bearings in both sides of this. So uh, give me some time. I'll get the video up and running again and uh, I'll have some uh, new bearings fitted. And I'll tell you how I'll do it when I get to it. But for now, what I've got to do is I've got to freeze the uh, bearings and give this a slight warmth, just to expand all the loose joints slightly. Uh, so I can make the hole slightly bigger so the bearings can just literally drop in nicely. But other than that, I'll let you know what happens. And uh, I will make a video on about the bearings being fitted. Alright, take it out, take it easy, take care.